challenge. He thought that was long. It sailed and then dipped down, and Federer hoping that it's long because it's a couple of break points. Sure is a big call. That is for sure. And it was not it. How you going? If you've spectated tennis either at a stadium or on the TV watching at home, you've probably seen Hawkeye in action. It works by having 10 high-speed cameras set up around the court that track the ball with supreme accuracy. It's what gives you those intense replays when a player challenges the line umpire's decision. The World Tennis Association has a rule that a challenge system must have an accuracy within 5 millimeters, and the Hawkeye system boasts an impressive accuracy within 3.66 millimeters. It accomplishes this by tracking everything about the ball's motion, including its speed, spin, skid and distortion when it bounces, and the air resistance. This means that a single rally could be up to a million calculations. Unfortunately, I don't have 10 grand for a YouTube video or a PC powerful enough for RTX Minecraft. Wow, it's just like real life, man. What the? So I'll be tackling everything Hawkeye does step by step individually. I wanted to start with modeling how the ball moves after a shot. I went down to the local club to get some slow-mo shots on the court. After splitting each frame of the slow motion into images, we used Photoshop to overlay them and create a continuous ball path like shown here. Unfortunately, this had the side effect of making me look like an octopus moving at Mark 5. After trying to use Wolfram Mathematica, which didn't go very well, we then imported the image into GeoGebra and chose four points, or rather, four tennis balls, and used polynomial interpolation to get a curve that best fit the ball's path. A shot doesn't really follow a polynomial, as factors like air resistance and the way the ball is spinning affects its motion. So we moved on to find the 3D position of the ball, and went on with the next step, triangulation, which uses, oh no! <laughs> So we used photogrammetry instead, which uses 2D images to create a 3D landscape. After picking up some fancy camera gear from the side of the road oh, score. that was next to my mate's car just before he left on a photography trip, I set up a mini studio to capture some balls with a completely black background. To get the actual 3D image of the studio, we used a program called Metashape. Unfortunately, we only had a two-year-old MacBook, so rather than it taking one point to calculate, it took a bit over an hour. But after a brief stint with a cursed image with a black hole where the tennis ball was supposed to be, we got a textured version that was equally cursed, but it looked a lot better. So I exported it into Blender. And I got the position of the ball in Blender and compared it to the measurements I took in my studio. I also used Python to create a nifty little program that turns everything black except for the tennis ball to help with detection. But then I realized I wrote this program to make everything black, four pictures taken in a completely black studio. But it was already dark outside, and Geelong was taking a huge dump on Collingwood in the semis, so I didn't bother testing it for usage against an actual background. After all this, we got some results. I used a really high-tech technique in Blender to find the position of the ball. We found that the position of the ball was actually correct. However, there was something wrong with the studio's dimensions in the 3D model, and it got scuffed because we took the photos incorrectly. I'm going to likely need to design my own software to get a perfect ball tracking system, which I now understand is way harder than you would think. So it's unsurprising that Hawkeye Innovations strictly protects their intellectual property, making research for this demonstration a big pain in the ass. But I persevered, and now I have one obstacle ahead of me. The bounce. The bounce is easily the most complex part of the shot when it comes to the physics of it. That's why I employed my friend, Red to help demonstrate. In tennis, most shots are hit with spin. There are two types of spin, topspin and backspin and backspin or slice. The way the ball is spinning before and during the bounce heavily affects its trajectory after the bounce. Let's take a flat shot with no spin. The ball will bounce off the court at the same angle it came in. A ball with topspin, however, is spinning in the same direction as friction. So it will begin to roll, and therefore, when its velocity says time for liftoff, it will leave at a lower angle. Finally, a ball with backspin rotates in the opposite direction of friction. 
they cancel out to make the ball skid and then reverse the direction of spin and take off at a higher angle. All of this is measured by Hawkeye in case the system is needed for a double bounce call. Something else that is measured is the distortion or squish of the ball. I decided I would test this by giving tennis balls some CPR and recording myself. And after giving countless balls CPR, I then applied just about the same amount of force on this set of scales to see the weight. Now that I know how the spin, the skid, and the distortion works, I'm going to put it all into Mathematica so I can demonstrate how it works. And so after going on this journey of discovery, I now have faith in how Hawkeye works. I may not have been able to build my own perfect Hawkeye, but at least now I know that as long as I have Hawkeye watching over me, I'll never have to worry while on the court again. And I hope neither will you. Oh shit!